Hello, my friends, and welcome to a video. A rare thing on this channel because I can't even find time to do one. Yeah, I've been trying to do a video, but I haven't been able to find the time between school, home, and many, many other things. Uh, but I'm finally here, and I'm finally doing another video. This one's a little different from my other ones. This is more like my educational fo top five videos, except it's just five and there's no tops. Because I'm too lazy to figure out which one is better than the other. Because really, these are all very popular. Today I'm going to tell you about the many truths behind many of the concepts in sci-fi that you see everywhere. Books, movies, video games, anything that has a sci-fi conception. I will tell you about it, but only five out of all of them. Because I cannot do all that searching. I don't have the money or the resources. And the internet does not provide enough. Wow. The internet doesn't provide enough information. Kind of ironic. First one. Time travel. Ah, uh, time travel. The most popular and famous, if not one of the most popular and famous con concepts of all sci-fi. Sadly, there's some things that people don't really realize about this concept that it would really, really ruin the absolute joy of it. The absolute thrill of having the idea of actually going through time. I'm sad to say that it's probably not really real real thing that can actually happen and uh, in my opinion guys it's probably not gonna be a thing ever probably and even if it does probably for another trillion years although there are scientists such as Einstein and Stephen Hawking that have actually tried to back up the idea that this can happen because of black holes and wormholes when sadly, neither of them are supported through any evidence. And seriously, we haven't even found any wormholes. What are you talking about, Einstein? Cat! First of all, before anyone goes down in the comments, typing, Bull, it's not true, it's real! Ugh. First of all, let's take a look at what time really is. Time is really just a concept made up by man that we use in order to measure certain things, such as speed. You know, how long it takes for something to occur, you know? Our years, our day, our time. We use it for our entire schedule. And many of us can't really think of the universe without having time. When in reality, that's... That's actually how the universe is. Time isn't measured out, out there. It moves regardless of time. And people think... That because of sci-fi and fantasy, that without time, everything will just stop moving. That's not true. Is the only way time can ever affect anything is if we push buttons on a keyboard or on a DVD player. Because in the end, like I said, it's just a concept. It's not a physical thing. It's our way of measuring and monitoring several different things in this world and in this universe and that's in my opinion so back off I don't need nobody trying to educate me on a concept anyway on to the next one also one last thing where are you gonna get the power to be able to do this because in the end time is not a solid visible thing it's not like oxygen, where it's there, but it's just invisible or unseeable. No, it's a concept, like I said before, and just now, and continue saying. But, in the case that there is time, you need a tremendous amount of power to be able to move it backwards. Because you're not just moving back one or two points of the universe. And though, if time travel did happen, really, in the end, 
if you did screw with something in the past in order to try and make the future change. Ah! Ah! You have changed nothing. Because in hindsight, you were already there. The future is not affected. You already made that happen. Whatever you did. If you tried to assassinate Hitler, you most likely miss. Because in the end, it's already written in history. You're already there, and the idea that you can simply just do one simple task in order to change the future is insane. Because you were there. You can be put in recorded history, and in the end, you're already have been you already have been there. You haven't done anything. And either way, and since time is just a concept, you need to find another way to make everything go in reverse. First of all, how are you gonna do that? How how you gonna do that? You you gotta tell me how you gonna do that. Go ahead, explain. Tell me. I'm waiting. But anyway, I'm not letting you answer. Just go ahead and answer in the comments. I don't care. But, in the end, you still need a tremendous amount of power. And, for both ideas that with or without time being an actual thing that we can mess with, because in the end, air is something you can screw with. Anyway, if, with or without it, you still need enough power to make the entire universe go backwards. <laughs> or at least the area in which you're in. Because in the end, it's still going to take a tremendous amount of power that we probably won't be able to even generate in the next trillion years. Teleportation! Oh yeah! Yet another very popular concept used everywhere. In all three forms of media. Well, I guess in all forms, it's probably more than three, but if you count just telling stories. But either way, it's another very popular form. We all know that we'd love for this to be a concept and for that light to not reflect off of the lamp so brightly as the camera. Anyway, as I was saying, We'd all love for this to be a thing in the future. So would I. Well, let's let's get realistic here. It's it, It'll probably be deadly. Teleportation is pretty much when you're breaking down the molecules of a person or thing, transporting them, and putting them back together in another spot. That's what I'm talking about. Think about it like this. Say that someone got their head cut off. You're not going to be able to just stuff it right back on their neck and then sew it back on and they'll be alive. Huh? Hey, buddy, you lost your head. Hold on. I'll just hold it to your neck and sew it back on. It's going to work. No. That ain't how it works. What's really happening is your entire body's being broken down and no matter how fast all those atoms and molecules are broken down, you're dead once it's done. Because in the end, that's your entire body torn apart at once. It's like a grenade, except you're being torn apart instead of blown apart. And it would be painful, probably more excruciating than anything else we could do with any method of war or torture. Because you're being ripped apart! Molecule by molecule! Atom by atom! That's not just gonna go by like, oh, it, it doesn't hurt. It's nice. No, you're gonna be screaming! And agony! And pain! Like how I do when I see the recording and the reflection comes off the lamp! Why don't I just move it? Oh, much better. But anyway, like I was saying, teleportation is probably not one of the things we want. I'd rather just take a drone or an airplane or something that carries me to some other place rather than being torn apart by my tiniest little atom! 
and then reassembled just to be found like a dead corpse. It may be helpful with food and stuff since it's already dead, but then there's the other idea that it could screw up somewhere in the process. The atoms and molecules could be put back together wrong, or they probably may not even reach the destination. You never know. And now on to number three, shrink rays. We all love the idea of being shrunken down and being able to run around our home, seeing everything that we view as small to be large and sizable, like a giant Lego or a human-sized Barbie house. Well, that's just the thing. It's most likely going to be irreversible. When it comes to the idea of using shrink rays or shrink rays, it comes to the thought that you're going to get smaller, right? And then you have to think, how is that going to happen? Well, in the end, the idea is that either your molecules and atoms are made smaller, or many of them are taken off. And both ways are not only going to be extremely painful, but irreversible. You see, when it comes to energy, if an atom, <laughs> which an atom can't really be made smaller, because it's literally the smallest known thing. If that's made smaller, somehow, or just they take off atoms and many molecules and protons and neutrons and electrons, that's gonna hurt. Light teleportation. Except this time, you may be alive, but you're probably not going to be able to go back to being your same size. Yeah, you'll stay small permanently. Unless somehow you're able to collect the atoms and molecules and decipher a way for them to be stuffed on correctly. You're not going to be able to go back to being a regular human if you even survive the process. Because like I said, it's like tearing off someone's head and sewing it back on. Why am I being so morbid with this example? I'm creeping myself out. What the? And like anything else, it would take a tremendous amount of power. Because you're screwing with atoms. Not as much power as time travel, but still a lot of power. Now... On to number four, telekinesis and telepathy. Two of the most popular and famous concepts of sci-fi tying with time travel. These two things are everywhere. Star Wars and many other sci-fi movies. Yeah. Luke, you must use the force. And find my cell phone. I can't find it in the snow. Being able to speak to someone through your mind is another lovingly amazing concept. Though the truths behind them are quite sad. Though we're somewhat coming close to unraveling how to use telekinesis. It's not exactly like that as we recently discovered that you can use sound in order to manipulate things. Well, we've known that for a long time. We just now found a way to be able to use that. And that's the sad thing. We can't really make it do much other than levitate things. And in the end, we probably won't be able to use telekinesis to make something come towards us or push something away without having to have some kind of material item to help us. And the idea of telekinesis and telepathy is to be able to manipulate matter and speak to people through your mind without the help of machines or just through your mind or sometimes with biomechanical assistance. You know? But let's get one thing straight. We're probably never going to be Jedi. <laughs> Sad. But in the end, we can come close. As it is extremely, extremely challenging to be able to find any kind of way to actually perform telekinesis. 
Yeah, and as for telepathy, it's probably going to be painful. Think about it. you're sending signals out of your brain using either just your brain or something implanted in your brain. And I don't think putting something in your head is going to feel very nice in the morning. Uh, it results in something worse than death. Migraines. Mm. But this concept has been shown to be a little bit possible and maybe even happen one day. As telepathy can... Uh, iffy, iffy may happen as shown in many shows such as Excel World, which is an anime, so I don't know why I'm using that as an example. But uh, in the end, it may actually be possible through cybernetic enhancement, but as I said before, it could be painful and maybe even deadly, as you have a metal chip in your head made to send signals, which could probably short out and kill you in many ways. <laughs> in painful ways. <laughs> And I don't think that they're that far away, but I don't think that they're exactly close, saying that, well, most of the world is broke. U.S. can't deny this. We're already on our way to a stock market crash. Don't even deny it. But either way, it, these are two are mm, possible, but not exactly as they show them in sci-fi. In fact, they may be a little disappointing in ways that we don't even realize. And in many movies, it shows how people could speak telepathically, you know, from distances and just speak and share thoughts. And that's the way we envision telepathy and telekinesis to happen, like a Jedi makes it happen. When in reality, those things aren't going to be exactly how they describe them in sci-fi. Nothing is how they describe it in sci-fi. Why am I even saying this? But anyway, on to the next thing. Number five! Hypnosis! <laughs> Many of you watching right now are probably saying, Oh, you are full of it. That's just a false thing. It may be cool in sci-fi, but it's not gonna happen. To you, I say, stop talking, you're an idiot. Not really, I'm just joking, but... Listen. Hypnosis is an actual thing, and it's an actual treatment. You could walk up to any psychologist and ask them if it's an actual thing, and they'll say, yes, definitely. This is an actual treatment. And many people use it. Sometimes it's used to help people with addictions, such as to alcohol or cigarettes. Although it's not how you would exactly, exactly picture it. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh, it's not because it requires someone stupid. Wrong! It requires someone willing. For hypnosis to work, the person has to be willing to let it happen. And in the end, once it happens, you can't go past the, the boundaries there. You can't cross the line in their moral codes. Yeah, let, me, uh, let, let me explain. You see, the way it works is the mind of the person who is trying to be hypnotized has to be willing and able to uh, be hypnotized. I'm not saying it requires an intelligence, it requires that they want to be, as I've been saying over and over. You see, how it works is, you have to get that person's attention, and you have to have them focus every little bit of focus on either you, your voice, or something around them. That's when they'll begin to zone out. In this little zone, they're an autopilot, and they will do what you tell them, but it's dependent on what you tell them. To be sure and sweet, they're not going to strip, they're not going to kill, they're not going to give you money, they're not going to do anything that's going to be against what they do in their regular state of mind. Yeah, and they're only going to do what they would either regularly do, 
would be, you know, wouldn't be uh, bad or weird in their moral codes. So you should tell them to strip naked, they're gonna snap out of it and say, screw you, buddy, I'm leaving. <laughs> Bye. And in the end, that's exactly how it looks. And it's not as exciting or cool as you think. Because in reality, they're not in like a, a zombie-like trance. Uh, no, they're like 90% 90, 90 of the time. They're blank. They're listening. And you have to walk through them every step of the way and tell them what to do. And this has been done on people such as the people in the NFL do this. Coaches and doctors, they all use this on NFL players, and this is an actual thing. Uh, you could tell them, you could get them in the hypnotic stage, and it, pretty much hypnosis is a state of altered consciousness, where they're a lot more uh, suggestible. They're a lot more open to suggestions, but to limits. So when they put the NFL players in this trance, they tell them, you need to do the best you can. And that's one of the best examples I can give you. Because this is an actual case of hypnosis. This is sometimes used. Not all the time, but a lot of times. <laughs> but in reality, it's, in, it's uh, not as easy to do as you think. You can't just get a pocket watch or get those little swirls you see on TV, those little discs with the weird vortex light coloring on it, and think that it's actually just going to hypnotize them right there. It takes years of practice, focus, and study in order for it to actually be successful. If you do, if you do know how to hypnotize someone, then on ya! You wasted your life studying how to hypnotize people. Good job. Unless you're a psychiatrist. Not a psychiatrist, they deal with medicine. I mean psychologist. I'm an idiot. Unless you're a psychologist and your job is to help people. Mentally. And then I say, Okay, cool. Good job, man. That's part of your job. Go ahead. Well, guys. This is the end of my video. Thank you so much for watching. And I want to give everyone who watches this, who's even thinking about going down in the comments and saying, that's not true, you screwed up, that's not true. This is all in my opinion. I literally just threw this together because I like the idea of talking about sci-fi. And the things that people don't really realize about it. But go ahead, this is an open media. This is, You can say literally whatever you want on the internet. And I'm thinking about talking about that uh, in a later video. But yeah, go ahead. But seriously, please like the video. It helps me out, out in the future, you know. And if you want to see more, subscribe. And I will see you guys later. Goodbye, my friends.